Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 12th, 2012. And I sit here in my car. It's now 1024. I've got a half an hour to go. Provided I don't have to move it for the street cleaning. Assuming he has already been by, which you really can't assume, but it looked clean where I was parked, so maybe he has been by. Although it doesn't look so clean right across the street, so perhaps he's not been here. Tuesday, June 12, 2012. Um, I listen a lot to Best of the Left. Uh, I'm inclined to listen to that kind of... Uh, radio and that kind of thinking, it makes much more sense than uh, religious right-wing uh, Rush Limbaugh type radio programs, which, which make me kind of ill, make me des definitely ill. And uh, one of the big issues, of course, today running the Republican Party is there really shouldn't be separation of church and state. There should be just maybe a little. The Pope shouldn't run for president of the United States. And I believe Pat Robertson did Robertson, Robertson, not Robertson, Pat Robertson did run for the United, uh, president of the United States, I believe, and lost pretty quickly. But the concept of separation of church and state is a very powerful one, and one obviously misunderstood because so many religious groups are getting involved in politics to promote their religious point of view. You know, the Catholic Church against abortion, now that's a, big, that's a sensitive issue and a difficult one, but nonetheless, they're getting deeply involved in that. And free birth control advice, Gay marriage, gay marriage, my gracious goodness. What is the point of separation of church and state? Well, what most people in the United States don't think about and don't understand is that prior to the United States being formed officially in 1776, but even before that, people came to this country as a result, much as a result of religious repression. I mean, if you look at how the church ran politics in Europe and how, I mean, totally corrupt it was and how uh, the church would judge people and throw them into the water with their hands tied behind their back and if they came up, they were, they were innocent and if they drowned, they were guilty. R religious persecution that when the religions ran governments, it was as bad as any other system. Highly corrupt, highly self-serving, and very much against any kind of progress that would in any way diminish the power of those in power of the church. The church, various forms, Calvinism, this Christianity. So people came to the to the United States and really did not want to have religious people in charge. They wanted separation of church and state. Now, that meant that the church was not to be involved in running the state. But that is no longer the case. It probably never, probably never was really the case. But now it's getting more rampant. And the Republican Party seems to be really run, or overrun, by people who have religious points of view, religious programs they want to promote. And you don't see it so much in the Democratic world. I mean, Rick Santorum was a Catholic. I was going to say the Democrats seem to have a lot of Catholics in them, but I think Rick Santorum is a Catholic. And you said the Catholics are a little better educated about these kind of things, I they seem to be better educated. These days, surprisingly, not when I was a kid. When I was a kid, Eisenhower was a Republican, and he was bright. If you look at the things that Eisenhower did and said, 
They are right out of the Democratic playbook, playbook of today. He would have had none of this kind of republicanism. And he won in 1952, I remember, very clearly. And he was a very good president. He was a very good general. But today, when you've got Rick Santorum and the governor of Texas, who, whatever his name was, Rick Perry, and that good Catholic Newt Gingrich, that fine, outstanding Catholic Newt Gingrich, and the Mormon Mitt Romney, whose religion is a little bit crazy. I mean, uh, the way it got formed, you have to really look at it uh, questionably. I'm not going to go into that, but if you want to take a look at why, how Mormonism got its start, just look up John Smith in upstate New York. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. And then everybody wants to have their religion have something to do with the government. They want religion to be in government. They want Christianity or some form of Christianity. Now, Mormonism is not Christianity. Mormonism is John Smithism. And it's a batty religion. If, yeah, I mean, and every other religion but Mormonism says Mormonism is nuts. Of course, every religion says every other religion is nuts. And my point is, is that you want to keep religion and the kind of religious creed out of government because government cannot be run like that. It cannot be run on beliefs in a creator, in the founder of your religion and what he said. I mean, you're seeing the success that the Muslim countries are having running by the laws of, of uh, Muhammad. Is it Mohammed or Muhammad? I don't know. Mohammed. Mohammed, Muhammad. Mohammed. Mohammed, I believe. I mean, these countries are, are operating like they're in the, uh, what, 13th century? With rules that are just archaic and uncivilized. And this is religious government. Now, that's what they want. That's what the leaders want, because they can want it. And we have to question the motives of all religious leaders and their addiction to power. It's like every other power-hungry leader who can stay in office as long as he wants. Take Vladimir Putin right now. He's uh, cracking down on Russian dissidents, and, and Russia's looking pretty, pretty frothy these days. It's not looking good. Uh, because Putin wants to stay in power. He wants to run things. He wants to be the guy who makes the money and keeps his buddies making money. I mean, that's the way it is. A, um, a superb book is Why Nations Fail. Why Nations Fail. And it gives a pretty objective look as to what happens economically and politically in countries that fail. Much has to do with including the public including its citizens and their rewards, and not having leaders whose whole concept is to stay in power and, and enrich themselves. Our presidents in this democratic nation of ours end up enriching themselves because they were president. We don't know, I don't know, how many of them actually managed to enrich themselves while they are in office, as many leaders of many countries are able to do, uh, especially un unelected leaders. But so much prestige goes with being the leader of a big democratic country that once you're out of office, everybody wants you to work for them and represent them and so forth and so on. You make a lot of money. Look at Bill Clinton. He's got a ton of money now. So getting back to separation of religion and state. This is how this, really how this country got formed, was to avoid the religious oppression of Europe and England and all the countries that came, people came over here. They wanted, because the, they were just being so oppressed by the leaders, and all those leaders apparently were very involved 
in, with religious connections, and there was great religious persecution. The Catholics among them, or if not foremost among them, I don't, I'm not sure of that, but uh, I, and there's been an enormous amount of Christian crusades and Christian inquisitions, and Catholic, Catholic inquisitions, were brutal. Brutal! Over what? Over power. You don't do it because somebody doesn't believe something. You do it because they threaten your power, threaten your income, threaten your life. And that's, that's what religion has always ended up doing, unfortunately. I hate to say it. So separation of church and state is very, very, very important to our country. And people don't understand it. People think, well, yes, it's, but my religion really is right, and my religion really should have a lot to say of what goes on. And yet certain people, president, uh, people who were running for president, suggested that all non-believers to his religion should be thrown out of the country. And that's a presidential candidate who said that. Do they understand how little they understand? The answer, of course not. Of course not. So you have to keep struggling and trying to educate and make sure that secularism, which is now being touted as another form of religion, uh, it being, it's very clever. It's a religion. It's not. It's no religion. It's, it's governing without religious input. And so it's been called, uh, what's the name? Mitt Romney called it another form of religion. And that's like, oh, God, help us. Well, so everything's a form of religion then. A anything. I mean, uh, looking at a tree is a form of religion. It's difficult. It's not easy. Separation of church and state. I say keep it going for a while.